Hey everybody, I'm on my little uh, twilight jaunt here <clears throat> and thought that uh, again, just for a change of setting, this might be, this might, might, might make for an interesting video uh, or interesting um, location for a video. Ambulatory uh, and, uh, and also you know, out in the elements and, and so forth, where you normally see me in my car or in my room. Um, so I wanted to talk about a movie that I rewatched yesterday uh, called Margot at the Wedding. Um, this is a Noah ba Baumbach film, and... Uh, uh, Noah Baumbach was, I guess, sort of tangentially related to the mumblecore scene of the aughts. Those of you who don't know what mumblecore is, yeah, it's basically movies with lot, with not not much of a not much production value. Uh, that are that are low budget and you know just feature a lot of downtime and not much happening. Um, <laughs> which, which sounds, um, so it may not, may not sound all that exciting, but the, I guess the idea is something like Cinema Verite, where it's, it's not about, you know, just smacking you over the head with, with, uh, spectacular things, you know, spectacular events and, and incredible, powerful revelations all the time, uh, but something, you know, more more subtle, more character-driven. Um, the more, the more hardcore mumblecore films, hardcore mumblecore films, uh, don't, you know, don't feature anyone who's, who's really named, any, any actors that you recognize, uh, and, you know, look like they were just, uh, I don't know, just, just, just thrown together in a, in a matter of a few days. Uh, there's an amateurish look to them, which is intentional. Um, again, not much in the, in the way of soundtrack, not much in the way of anything that, that people would generally call cinematic. Um, but I was, I was a mumblecore fan. And in fact, I think I've made, although it remains unfinished, <laughs> But back in the 90s, I, uh, I uh, tried to, I, on, uh, with a video camera, I made my own uh, sort of mumblecore movie where I just roped in a bunch of, a few of my friends. Nobody was really enthusiastic about it, but me, um, <laughs> I just sort of dragged them along. And it was mostly improvised and blah blah. blah. Anyway, uh, that that's just just an interesting interesting fact. And this was before the mumblecore scene. This was like this is, I think as early as 1990 or so when I was a mere lad. Anyway, Margot at the wedding is I find similar to uh, the kindergarten teacher in some ways in that in that it's. <laughs> I don't know if it was intended to be to be this, but it's it's it, what it amounts to, just like the kindergarten teacher, uh, it's an examination of of the pathologies <laughs> of modern woman, um, you know, of a certain class, of a certain background, <clears throat> um, you know, the. Uh, both of the movies are set in New York and the surrounding environs, uh, and the the main character, uh, you know, sees herself as as a cultured individual, and uh, just, uh, but just just kind of goes off the rails and uh, is infuriating. <laughs> to have to to have to watch to have to sit through uh, to, to just to see her uh, 
just to put up with her shit. <laughs> you know, even as the viewer of the movie, you're just like, God, Ugh. you know. <laughs> but um, the the uh, the the most infuriating, unlikable uh, character, and there's there's I'd say I'd say most of the characters in this movie fit that bill, but the most unlikable one is the, the titular like in that word titular uh the the uh the margot uh, uh of the title um played by the former mrs tom cruise um just a few years after eyes wide shut i'm not sure if it was uh, if, it, if it was after they they'd split up i think it was yeah it was it was it was a, it was a little bit after they'd split up but uh but um, Nicole Kidman plays this. Uh, I'll try to. I want to describe her because because she she is such an infuriating character. You know, I, I don't want to be too vituperative here. I want to just just be descriptive. She's, you know, somebody. Uh, she's a woman of a certain stature. You know, kind of maybe. Uh, upper middle class, um, neurotic, um, you know, a, a very, very bossy and controlling. <laughs> I guess I'm starting to sound judgmental here. You you can't really describe her without using descriptors, descriptive words that are that are unflattering. Um, so, what makes the movie interesting? But well, what's interesting about the title is uh, what uh, what what happens uh, in the movie is that there is no wedding. The wedding never happens. Um, we we uh, we travel with Margot and her son uh, and Claude, who's who's maybe like twelve or thirteen. Um, they they go to visit uh, Margot's sister <clears throat> on on some island, uh, I think maybe off the coast of Maine or something like that, somewhere in that area. You know, and you have to it's a place where you have to take a boat to get there. Um, and Margot is a very you know has, has had has had a, has been feuding with with her sister for a long long time. Um, her sister is also. Uh, not very likable, but she's much more, much more likable than Margot. Um, but they share a lot of the same characteristics. They're both, uh, they're both very petty. Uh, they're both very passive aggressive. Um, I think, you know, they, 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 they t <laughs> it, it becomes amusing, you know, the way that they take shots at each other, you know, while feigning, you know, like, like, uh, pretending to that it's out of love or, or, or out of care when when it's actually uh, you know some cutting some really cutting or insulting remark uh, it's it's l less easy to take when they say something about their child um, which happens frequently in this movie <clears throat> um, there's a weird semi edible thing going between Margot and her son, she kisses him on the lips a couple of times. Not 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 like extended kisses, but and they sleep in the same bed uh, in in a couple of scenes. Um, but but ge but generally speaking, you know she's she's uh, not a force for good uh, in her son's life. She's uh, she makes remarks that are thoughtless. You know, and uh, that embarrass him or or cause him to feel self-conscious. You know, uh, really without without even thinking, without really thinking about what she's doing. But I think there's some some process in effect uh, whereby she's uh, you know she she's got some kind of. Uh, stunted, sort of, uh, warped, twisted 
relationship with him. Not not like all the way at a pull, not not like sexual, but where she she sort of wants to keep him down. She she sort of wants to keep him. Uh, you know, she's she's a very insecure person, and uh, she feels the need to take shots at others to to sort of. <laughs> Uh, puff herself up. Um, <clears throat> she. <sighs> well, what else can, should I say about her? Her, her? She and her her husband are in the processes of probably divorcing, although they haven't divorced yet. And she's actually gone to the, her her sister's house to to where this wedding is going to happen. And Jack Black shows up. <laughs> Uh, in an interesting role, he's he's just this this pitiful sort of character. Um, there is some humor, there's some amusement, but uh, his relationship with Margot's sister, um, played by Jennifer Jason Lee, is it, it's pretty. It's just it's not. It's far from being an ideal relationship, and Margot is very clear. In the contempt that she feels towards him, and, and uh, you know she, uh, there's just all sorts of like like all sorts of petty backstabbing, gossipy kind of stuff. You know they talk behind each other's back. Um, Margot's sister tells her a secret, you know something that she's meant to, that's meant to be kept in confidence, and then Margot goes and tells her son about it, and her son goes and tells. Margot's or, or Margot's sister's daughter about it, and so soon everybody knows. <laughs> and uh, it's just very typical of the way, uh, you know, the, the, uh, of this kind of this whole environment. And um, I, I would say that the one redeeming—I don't even know if it's a redeeming characteristic, but. I think there are times when we see how pitiful uh, Margot is, in particular, and feel we, we feel sorry for her in spite of ourselves. You know, in spite of uh, knowing that she's just an awful person. Um, and when I say awful, not awful. She's not. There's no. There aren't any character. The characters in this movie aren't aren't evil. Uh, Per se, they're they're not capable of doing anything evil. They they are malicious. Uh, they are, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> backstabbing. As I said, uh, just just uh, it's like uh, the 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 worst of sibling relationships, um, and 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 the, the, which. And where they never really mature, they never really grow out of uh, the way uh, they were towards each other when they were growing up. You know, uh, Margot thinks of herself as as uh, superior. You know, and sort of wants to wants to lead everybody else um, and lecture everybody else. There's one scene where she lectures. She after the kids run out of the room, she tells a father. That uh, you know, his son clearly has autism, and he needs to do something about it. <laughs> she just presumes to do. She just presumes to be to be that obnoxious. Um, it's 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 pretty pretty hilarious, you know, in a in a cringe sort of way. This this movie was made before before the word cringe really caught on, but but this is a. A cringe comedy for sure. There are some uproariously funny moments. Um, <laughs> there's there's one moment where <laughs> uh, where Jack Jack Black's character tearfully confesses his uh, his infidelity uh, <laughs> with with uh, the the babysitter. Uh, who might, I don't know whether even whether she's even, she might still be underage. Um, or that he, that he made out with her. 
That's what he said. He comes goes as far as saying that, well, we just made out. And then his father chases him uh, down <laughs> down the pier to the beach, and it's just very it's very funny, you know. In a again, in a cringe sort of way, where these these characters are just are just totally unadmirable, but also kind of pathetic. Uh, and so you you can you can relate to, or you can, if not relate, you can sympathize, or you know, or at least I don't know if sympathize either. But you can feel sorry for them when when it when you know it gets exposed just how pitiful they are. Um. So Margot <laughs> uh, played by uh, Nicole Kidman. You know, at her, at her most, in her most ice queenly, uh, uh, you know, persona, the, the 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 persona that she kind of has had throughout her career. Um, here, you know, it's just it's just there in spades, and and it seems like again, as I said, as I was saying before, it she seems to represent <laughs> a certain type of woman. Um, you know, of a certain class, of a certain background, um, you know, who, who presumes to be highly cultured and, and, you know, to be, uh, better than ever, than everybody around her, uh, but, but, uh, clearly is, is highly insecure and neurotic and, uh, just, <laughs> just, just somebody you just want to slap, to be honest. <laughs> Not that I condone violence against women now, but I'm just saying. Um, uh, so, so, I, so she's also. Uh, I should. I, I didn't say this before. She, she, she went to this wedding, which ends up <laughs> getting uh, getting sidetracked. So there's a there's a nice irony in the title uh, because there, there's, the wedding never actually happens. Okay, maybe that's that's a minor spoiler. I don't know. Not it's not really that big a deal, but um, but but she's also there because she's uh, the guy that she's she's sort of romantically entangled with. Even though she's she hasn't divorced her husband yet, he lives like a mile away <laughs> on this island. So Margot's sister says. Uh, Jennifer Gen Jennifer Jason Lee's character says at some point, you know, I think, sometimes I think you didn't. You just the only reason why you showed up is because the guy you're fucking <laughs> lives a mile away. <laughs> just, just, uh, just painful, painful dialogue like that, but also, you know, humorous. Like I said, in a cringy sort of way. Um, now Noah Baum Baumbach is, uh, I'm, you know, I'm sure a very liberal, liberal New York Jew <laughs> kind of guy. Uh, so I don't know if this is intentional on his part, uh, uh, but I think this, I think the movie, intentionally or not, sh uh, is can can be called could be called reactionary or or you know could be. I don't know, labeled as misogynistic by, by some, just because it's very unsparing in the way that it portrays <clears throat> these, these women. Now, the, the men who are in the story aren't very likable either, but it's, it's the, the central relationship is Margot and her, her sister. Uh, and they, the way they relate to one another and the way they relate to others um, just seems, again very representative of what one could call a certain type of modern woman of, you know, of a particular class, of a particular background, from a particular region, you know, the upper, more upper crust uh, New York uh, cultured, you know, she's a writer and this, that, and the other thing. And, and, and uh, uh, you know, while it's maybe not as shocking as the kindergarten teacher is, because we don't necessarily see Margot or her sister do anything that just really 
pushes the boundary uh, of, uh, you know, in the way that the, the, the kindergarten teacher character, uh, you know, she really goes all in because she, she believes she knows what's best for this child. Uh, so she ends up kidnapping him, you know, at the end of the story. There's nothing quite like that, nothing quite as, as shocking or as, uh, as uh, provocative as that. But still, there's something about the, these characters, and there's like an honesty in the way, an unsparingness in the way these characters are shown, where you ultimately don't end up totally hating them. Um, you, you develop a kind of, uh, like I said, if not sympathy, you, you, you can see what's pitiful about them. You can see, you know, the things that are lacking in their lives that they're overcompensating for. I, to me, what I find hardest to forgive is the way they treat their kids, the thing, kind of things they say to their kids. Um, and it's just like just, just these casual sorts of remarks that are very hurtful. Um, you know, and they, they just say them, they just fling them off. Uh, you know, fling them off. Um, you know, not understanding how, how you know, what kind of effect that's ha that has on kids. I, I find that very, I find that stuff very difficult to forget. Um, so there you go. Uh, Margo at the Wedding. You can watch it on Netflix if you've seen it and you have thoughts. Please leave them below. Thanks for watching.